My name is Emmanuel, commonly known as Focus, and I am a Christian, I am a husband, I am a father, I am an encourager, I am a friend, I am an entrepreneur, I am a businessman, I am a worshiper, pastor, hope pusher, friend, and a Nintendo 64 Mario Kart legend. The name Focus is as it is an ever-present continuous statement. It is uh, a rhythm, it is a heartbeat, it is what I am and what I am to be, that I am to continually grow, continually impact, continually pour, and continue to be a blessing to my generation. Some of the things that I do, I am a business owner for a business called Prophetic Cuts Barbershop, um, one of the amazing barbershops here in Ottawa. I also own a media company called In Focus Productions. I am also a children's pastor at Transforming Life Center, as well as the head of media at Transforming Life Center, where God is at work. Um, growing up in Ottawa, in terms of being a black young man in Ottawa, um, of course, there's been some shortcomings, but there's also been some really great moments. I'll speak about some of the shortcomings. Um, it did not dawn to me till recently, but I remember when I was in grade three, um, one of my teachers kept me in an after school program for uh, curricular activities. And the curricular activity was teaching me how to clean. Um, the teacher was busy trying to teach me how to clean. Uh, you clean this way or you clean that way. This is how it is. Um, I believe her intention was that I would end up with uh, custodial services. But here I am as a businessman. Um, I, I believe every black person, at least those I know, um, have a situation when it comes to the law. There was a time in uh, the city of Gatineau, which is still in the, the, Otter, the greater Ottawa area, where I was coming from a surprise party and I was heading to my car. And as I was heading to my car to start the car, uh, a police officer drove up on me and started to arrest me. Um, little I know, at least three cop cars were pulling up. I managed to call uh, my then girlfriend, who was my wife, and she came, everyone came out. Um, scene just moved really, really fast. I ended up being in a police car. Um, next thing I know, uh, I was probably there for, I'd say a good five to 10 minutes, maybe 15. A light was on me. And all I hear is, no, that wasn't him. Um, I remember just being so angry. The next day, we went to go see the police station. I told myself I never wanted to see the person's face because I just didn't want to keep him in my spirit. Um, as soon as we got there, the, the, the head of police station just came out in a rush. Oh, I know all about your story. Don't worry, it's handled. You can go home. Um, I said, sir, you don't know me and you don't know what it is to walk in my shoes. So no, this story is not over. And I remember just continuing on the story. He said, no, everything matched your description. You know, it was your height, wearing a hoodie, dark colors. And I said, I was not wearing a hoodie. I was wearing an orange hat. Um, as the case goes forward, um, got some lawyers involved and their lawyers like, don't worry, everything matched your description. You know, uh, your skin color, wearing an orange hat, your colors. And I was like, what? The first time we met, you guys said hoodie. So just to say, of course, um, without doubt, there are some systematic oppressions against us, but that should not be your story. It should not be your period. It should not be the end of what is said about you. Uh, rise above it. Today, my Black Canadian history moment will be of Miffin Gibbs. Gibbs was an ambitious entrepreneur. He started off as a carpenter, but by his early 20s, he was an activist in the abolition movement and going against slavery, joining the platforms as such great men as Frederick Douglass. The intellectual ferment of the day gave him access to knowledge beyond the classroom and he became widely knowledgeable, which allowed him to even increase his skill as a writer and continued as a successful black merchant. 
and he also founded and published the first black newspaper in California. Due to social and political restrictions, Gibbs, along with several other hundreds of blacks, left California to settle in colonial British Columbia. And in just over a decade in BC, he prospered in business, placing himself on the cutting edge of entrepreneurial activity where he was. In 1866, Gibbs became the first black person to be elected in public office in the Victoria Council seating. Being the second black official in Canada and the third black official in all North America, he chaired in several committees and even was an acting mayor at one point, which further advanced the black voice in the community. Although he lived in BC for just a little over a decade, he managed to leave a significant impression that in 2016, the city of Victoria, BC, declared 19th of November, which is my birthday, Mifflin Gibbs Day. For more information, check out all the links below. Happy Black History Day.